Hi. Hi, Marco. How are you? Fine, thanks. Let me see. Uh, are you in Italy, right? Yes, I'm in Italy. I'm in Italy, yeah. So, in the evening, after lunch? Um, yeah, it's half past three, so it's after lunch, but enough after lunch to be already after the, the, the nap time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I think we'll also we'll mention Open History Map, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. No? exactly. Oh, good, good. Yeah. And uh, I think everything is ready. You, you can upload your presentation. Uh, yeah, I can share uh, about uploading. Okay. Let oh, me it's, it's, just, it's just sharing. In fact, it's just sharing. If you okay. click there on share, it will appear here. No. <laughs> Perfect. So your wow. second monitor is... Uh, on top of the other <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it's uh yeah it's it's a classic it's uh it looks like i'm looking at for for, for answers from gods above but it's not <laughs> i don't know you are near the pope and hearing the voice of <laughs> Where are you from, Marco? Uh, Bologna, Italy. Bologna? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. Nice city. Uh, okay, let me share my screen here. Have you been here in Bologna? Yes, yes, I, I've, I've already oh. been there. Oh, great. It's not. It's quite rare because usually people just go to Rome, Milan, and stuff. And everything is good. Venice, but, yeah. And Venice, no, but, but exactly. those, yeah, but those cities in, in the the north is, is quite rich, and the cities are really really nice. But Bologna yeah. is a, a very uh, uh, much history and so on. And yeah, absolutely. And for some reason, is is the agreements of Bologna is, are very well known in all universities in Europe. So Bologna is... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We have your presentation here. I can put it on the stage. Perfect. Oh, Open History Map is there. Yes. Good, good. Perfect. And we have uh, everything ready. So in a few seconds i'll give you the sure. stage and you can introduce yourself and and make your presentation yep. marco thank you for being here and uh, in time and everything ready so the stage is yours have a nice presentation thank you very much so hello everyone and uh, sorry i don't see the screen anymore okay Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, to my third presentation this year uh, on uh, caching time changes in maps uh, on Open History Map. Um, let me give you a, a very fast intro to Open History Map per se. Open History Map is an uh, is an organization we're trying to create uh, tool chains uh, and and tools for for digital humanities basically to um, represent data of the past uh, about the past with modern tools. So to do that, sorry, to do that we have um, uh, we have realized we have uh, generated a, a, a system a, a an infrastructure and a visualization and so. We have several elements to show. So that's uh, places where cities are, city details, all, and also um, countries level uh, uh, details in various kinds of scales. So, so uh, this creates a huge amount of, uh, of data. It's several, uh, um, several gigabytes of data that have, have to be uh, pushed to the, to the end user in based on the levels of detail the user is looking at and the area he is looking at so this is quite uh, quite complicated to to do and for this reason we started um looking at um 
for this reason, we had to evolve, uh, develop a, a, an architecture that gives us the ability to do uh, several several things uh, um, automatically. Um, the whole architecture, I discussed this uh, yesterday. Today, I was I'm looking just at the part where we look at the uh, the data itself, uh, which is this area, and it's composed of a front end where the map is the, displayed with Mapbox uh, GL. Um, and the the tile server that does just the heavy lifting of showing off the tiles, uh, the service that uh, um, enables the users to and the, the the importers more than the users to import the um, the data into the uh, the database that is a post GIS database, and then we have the the caching system to uh, explain you the caching system and how, how we develop that. Uh, I have to um, show you the details about the uh, the database. Specifically, the database is based on, uh, as, I, as I said, uh, PostGIS and uh, very uh, reliant on the partitioning system offered by uh, PostGIS. Precisely, the, um, mm, the the information is collected with the several uh, sets of information connected to the single data set. It's not uh, um, based on the same infrastructure and the same idea of uh, open open street map. Specifically, we create we have two basically two data uh, two tables. One of the items that are stored in the system, which are uh, which have two data two informations based uh, that, that represent the from the moment and the, the to moment and from when and to when the this item is relevant on the map. And this fact represents uh, is represented by two floating point uh, numbers. It's not a time. Um, uh, it is not a um, date time uh, object. It's not a timestamp because PostJS introduced uh, negative timestamps just a few uh, days ago. This is PostJS 14. Um, one element, one relevant element is the layer. And then we have the properties that is a JSON B object that represents all the details that we want to use for front end uh, visualization and also for data uh, management. Then we have the, the author, and the geometry is not stored within the item. It's stored within the hash. It's stored as a uh, foreign key uh, created by this hash element that represents the original hash of our uh, geometry. And then within the table geometries, we have several copies of the same geometry with, with le various levels of zoom so that we can recreate the, the data we're looking at based on the zoom level and the moment in based on zoom level moment in time x and y and x and y are uh, give obviously zoom level x and y give us the uh, the um, the map vector tile and the um, the date represents uh, gives us the um, specific item to look at as i said we rely very much on partitioning Meaning that based on the structure of time or the, uh, and of uh, production of data over time, we have a, for example, we have a very sparse uh, far past, meaning that we have one only partition, for example, from 8000 BC to 4000 BC. Then we have a smaller partition from 4000 to 3000, then 3000, 2000, 2000. Uh, uh, 1,500 BCE, 1,500, 1,000, and then we go even in smaller steps up to almost uh, 50 year steps within uh, the last, uh, uh, no, almost uh, five year steps within the last uh, 50 years and uh, 50 year steps within the last 200. Because obviously the, the amount of data we collect and we have managed uh, to, to collect and, and use um, is absolutely uh, um, distributed in a, in a, in a very uh, irregular way. And this means also that, for example, for geometries, we can rely on the fact that all points are points. So we can zoom around however we want, but points are points. On the other hand, the various zoom levels, we have uh, them as well partitioned into uh, several uh, partitions. This results in a very huge amount of partitions, but through 
SQL Alchemy uh, and a, um, an, an automated partitioning script, we can generate these partitions uh, automatically based on the layers the config and the configurations of the uh, zoom levels. This configuration is reused in many parts of the, of the whole uh, infrastructure. This creates for us, for example, a huge amount of uh, data stored in our uh, database based on the various levels. Because as I said, the geometries are repeated for the various levels of detail. So it's normal for us to have almost the same size of, uh, of data sets, of, um, of the tables for uh, the high level zoom levels and the low level zoom levels. And this creates obviously a, a problem with uh, uploads because it takes time to generate the data. Now, this creates also a, anyway, our infrastructure is not, is based on the, the, the four volunteers that are working on the, on the whole system. So it's based on not, not much, uh, let's say it's not paid um, by, by, by huge funding, but in, in, this, in fact, it's not paid by funding at all. So it's based on a, on a volunteer based, uh, um, uh, server. So the, the, the architecture is, we, we have several problems when visualizing the data, by the way, the, 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 um, the map is available here. If you want to, um, if Jorge, you want to share the this, uh, the link, um, it's uh, map.openhistorymap.org or openhistorymap.org where you can find our details about our um, our project. Anyway, the the this creates a problem because when you look at specific moments in time, um, uh, Europe in 17th, 18th century is a huge mess, is a horrible mess, is a beautiful mess, honestly, but it's a, it's a, anyway, it's a mess because there's a lot of data, a lot of changes, a lot of things going on, and this takes up to a minute to download and the browser ignores the downloaded data, the, the, the scripts fail and everything uh, slows down and the users are unhappy. And we are unhappy because our users are unhappy. So we have, why not create a cache, a caching system? So let's go to the drawing board. How do we, uh, do we call our layers? We basically call our layers via a uh, ZXY uh, PBF uh, uh, query. Only we added the date element in the middle, but the date is a float. And this creates the, a whole lot of problems when trying to cache all these elements because these, this is a list and that's not a problem. This is, is uh, integer elements and we know that as very well, we can cache them any way we want, but this is a floating point and this makes things horrible. Uh, so how could we, could, we, could we manage that? And we had this horrible problem that we have a layer, we have the X and the Y, and date, and the element could be potentially continuous. But looking at it with um, with with the, with the, um, with perspective, we understood that in fact there is there was a slightly different issue. We had several items that had an OHM from, and an OHM two for the same item, and an OHM from, and an OHM two. So we had a, a the the. Um, Within a, con a potentially continuous dimension, we have very specific moments in time when the uh, this dimension uh, changed, and was uh, it was possible to preview these these changes in uh, uh, our in our structure. So, uh, what happened then? We asked ourselves, why don't we just consider these elements simply to be relevant or irrelevant? And um once we look at it uh, at it this way this uh means that um basically the map itself changes only in these instance which means that we just need to store these instance and recreate a new way to uh to manage this transformation and so we tried just to look at the, it in this way, by saying that we have a transport 
but for example, this is the key, and this is a key, and this is the value. We have two caches, basically. We have two uh, um, key value stores. One key value stores that's a store that tells us that we need the, um, uh, to get the relevant dates for this specific XY, uh, ZXY um, set for this layer. And it creates us, it gives us back a list of valid dates, of, of a valid sequence of dates. Within that the valid sequence of dates, we choose the one that is just before the, 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 the last relevant change before our, uh, our, the date we're looking at. So that this query becomes this specific MBT tile. And then we can return this tile to our user. Does this create um, repetition? Absolutely, but it's part of the caching game. Uh, does this uh, is this efficient? No, it's just the first draft of our uh, idea of a caching system for time space information. On the other hand, we had this beautiful thing. We love partitioning, and so we're trying to use partitioning as well for this um, for this infrastructure. So, um, and so we tried. We developed o o o OHM cache. It's based on fast API in Python. It's based on level DB. Is this enough for partitioning? Somehow it is. Uh, and we think, but, but that means that we have to do partitioning through load balancing and routing. So it uh, becomes more uh, of a um, system uh, on, and uh, operations uh, matter to manage the uh, caching of the whole infrastructure. Uh, and we're trying to think about something even more um, fun with uh, the, the people from the University of Bologna, which is using Kademlia. It was, uh, it, I'm old, and so I remember when we used Kademlia for, uh, um, for uh, downloading music and movies when uh, internet connections were not that fast. But the... Um, and the, and the idea is to go to tr to try at least to see how it works with a distributed hash table. Uh, the code is not yet uh, uploaded. I was trying to upload it this morning, but some uh, things came up, and I had no, uh, no no time to do that. But I will be uploading it in a few minutes after the the presentation, and it's uh, it will be in uh, GitHub Open History Map o OHM cache. Uh, and well. Thanks. Do you have questions, details, anything else? A very fast presentation for the for the Friday afternoon. Your mic is off. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, and thank you for your your quick presentation. Although I think it was was clear and and it is complicated. For people on the humanistic uh, side, it, was, it is not easy to explain the, all this stuff, I think, to them. <laughs> you no, cannot not show the, the behind the scenes. <laughs> no, it is absolutely not. Uh, it is not easy, but it's always fascinating to see them uh, come around and understanding the, 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 the side effects of um, Getting the the good part of these um, of the of the concepts behind these these tools, for example, um, as I explained yesterday, and as you might have seen in the first slides, there is a lot of data about uh, about the past. And um, let me just share with you another another image. Um, just because we have still 15 minutes so yes let me show you a few um, additional additional elements on the project uh, here let me change the screen Uh, 
uh, if you can show the the the, the screen I'm sharing yes. right now. Okay, you can see this. This is not yet connected to the cache, and you see the Central Europe is very slow to download because the, obviously the, the 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 changes in time have been so enormous, and the the, the data to be downloaded is quite uh, complicated. Because on the other hand, we are trying to keep track of several um, kinds of data sets. For example, uh, while having almost all, all data, a lot of data from a uh, uh, national level, national size data sets, we also have, for example, for Bologna, where I am, um, the city structure o over time, and we can see how it changed in this, uh, from the, the, the 14th century to the 17th, and to the late 18th century, where we also have uh, almost all buildings uh, uh, that were in in and around the city at the time. It takes some a few seconds to download. So But for many buildings, we also have additional uh, additional data as well, meaning that we can also go exactly. We also have uh, yeah 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 it's it's coming, and we also have data about the 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 eight. Yep, the building the height of of many buildings. Yes, we had the, the number of levels that are the, the, that. Uh, are there in a in a specific building? For some of them, it's obviously just uh, reconstructed from uh, archivistic information. For some of them, it's still the buildings are still there. So you see, the amount of data we have to um, jiggle with is quite a lot. So the the um, a caching system becomes way uh, every day more important. And for this reason, we started working on this. We started. Uh, Discussing this with with small tests, it it works, but this, it's not stable enough to to have it uh, yet up and uh, and running. But we will try to be um, to have it uh, running by the end of this um, by the end of October. So um, and as and as as always, and as every other tool created within this project, it's always going to be. Uh, open sourced and uh, uh, available for anyone to work on, um, play with, and and use and reuse for any other kind of uh, usage. Yeah. So, Mark, we can uh, while you are showing this, and thank you for showing this example, this detailed example from Bologna. <laughs> um, are the towers is, uh, still upright in in? <laughs> 19th century <laughs> yeah la sadly the 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 height of these the, of the towers is not within the data set we we download we we use oh. as a, as a baseline yeah it's it's too bad last in 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 dar 2 years ago we presented a, a project where we were using um in the, the 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 3d models of the real towers uh, as uh, as ba as elements here but the the data from that project is not yet integrated into this new version of the of the of the interface. So, as always, it's everything is work in progress. So, okay. So the the first question and the most voted question is about uh, partitioning postgres. Yeah. And uh, how do you configure this kind of partitioning? Yes. Let me let me show you. Uh, the partitioning in PostGIS is uh, something absolutely beautiful, and uh, based on the, the we are using a um, a set of um, how do you call it? Um, uh, let me. Uh, I'm I'm lo looking for the for the the the, the files here. Okay, here. Um, basically. I'm uh, I'm um, doing the, 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 the I'm generating the the models the the data mm -hmm. structure 
of the um the the the, the how it the partitioning based on a uh, a script that is also uh open source or if it is not it will be when we block open uh, release all the all the data and basically it, it, it tries to generate a partition for every uh, structure within within the the uh, within the labels within the um, for every label for every layer that we we have to use and for every structure we have to we have to manage for all of the time partitions we are using so as you can see generic minus infinite minus to a 4000 minus 35 3, and so on and so with this partitioning system we are able to generate something like uh, it's 15 layers by around 50 uh, uh, time blocks so it it's a, yeah it's a huge amount of, of layers to be generated, uh, to be uh, a huge amount of partitions to be generated. And it's all but, done but with, yeah. with, with, uh, with um, uh, SQL Alchemy. Okay, okay. On, on, the, on the Python side, right? Yes, exactly. Um, exactly. Uh, there is uh, one uh, question about uh, Timescale DB plugin. So the question is, have you looked at the Timescale DB plugin? Uh, um, I'm um, not not enough, honestly, not enough, um, because the 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 we we are. The answer to that is uh, yes and no because we we're you, we use uh, we will be using timescale db for uh, um, uh, for uh, the, the a part of the project that is based on uh, real time series data. The problem with this is that it relies a lot on the fact that the um, the um, The problem is exactly the fact that we are not using it. We were trying to use it with time buckets for uh, for geographic information, but it was somehow inefficient on our side, considering that we have elements that have to go be beyond the set, the simple. We have potentially object that goes that go through several uh, time buckets, and so it was uh, it was quite uh, 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 quite problematic. But but we will try to use it again because again as I said uh, we will be using it for sure for a side project that is uh, already ongoing with the University of Bologna that uh, has the, the 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 aim to um, generate uh, something like a data warehouse for indices for indexes uh, for several kinds of objects uh, of the past normalized through uh, Wikipedia then Wikidata uh, IDs so that we can look at how was the GDP of ancient Egypt and so on. We have also another question um, and it's about the open historical map which is a similar name but is yes. this project similar or? It's, no, it's, uh, it's similar we have almost the same object, and we had a, a very interesting call in a few uh, last month, because the the object is similar, but we have a different approach. Uh, while Open Street, uh, Open History Map, Open Historical Map uh, relies on yeah, it's it's a mess because we almost started in the same period, so we both started and we both grow grew a little bit in towards the uh, larger data sets. And now it's too late to change it. So yeah, <laughs> and we and so we discussed the whole thing and said, okay, it's too late. But as long as we're discussing almost the same thing with different names, who cares? It's data. So if you want our, our data, if we want your data, it's always data. So yeah. Anyway, the approach is slightly different. We are as our um, with a, with a, with an open history map project. We want to have more 
control over the academic aspect of uh, the data sets. And so we have the data index that can, uh, you can reach at index.openhistorymap.org. And uh, with that, we, can, we, we want to uh, try to manage the, the complexity of the data and the data quality with a, a separate, separate element. While Open History, Historical Map um, tries to do that with the Open Street Map approach, which is slightly different, more community-based, more uh, structure-based. Our approach is more uh, towards uh, information that is uh, verified and controlled by uh, academia or academic uh, uh, procedures. We're not directly importing data, we're importing data from people who generate data. Uh, and on the other hand, the, um, the other great difference is that we, we want to track also ephemeral information, meaning where was some, somebody at some point in time? Uh, where, where, what were the movements of one chip over time? And so with these information, this is our information that Open Historical Map does not have and does not want to have because it's Open Street Map of the past. And for that reason, we will most probably in the next month try to integrate that data from our database, from our interface, from our system into Open Historical Map so that we can have a, the, a shared uh, uh, structure for event visualization and uh, something like uh, open, let's say it's, uh, we also have something like uh, historical street view where we look at uh, historical photos and uh, paintings and uh, show them within their, in their position in time and space. So that creates a whole set of information that again, Open Historical Map does not have and does not want to have while we try to use it for digital humanities and so becoming a uh, more structured um, approach. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for this uh, explanation about the, both projects. And uh, we will end here this, this session. Thank you, Marco and the former presenters for thank being you. here and sharing their knowledge. We have the OSCM annual uh, general meeting in a few minutes, and you are invited to participate in the, in the life of the, of the association. And uh, the board is there, and please come to the annual general meeting of OSGO. Thank you all and see you around.